Good evening, Booktube, YouTube. This is Johnny. As I always say, I thought I'd make a video tonight. My wife went to work tonight. She works one night and then she's off. Eight nights. It is uh, a Monday night here in West Michigan. It is 10.03 at night. It is March the 30th, 2020. Tomorrow is the last day of March 2020. I have my calendar right here. And tomorrow's the 31st. We have 275 more days left in the year 2020. Tomorrow we have been 91 days in the year 2020. So I have uh, tomorrow night, before I go to bed tomorrow night, I'll put these away down on the lower level in a big plastic bin. Today I ended on page 330 for the year 2020. So tomorrow morning, Lord willing, I'll be on 331 for March the 31st. 2020. I already have my April 2000 diary ready. I'm supposed to have a dentist appointment in May, but due to the the plague, I'm sure it'll be canceled. I'm supposed to be have my teeth cleaned, my ch chompers on the 15th of May at 10.10 10 a.m. I'm sure that's canceled. But uh, I'm not really absolutely sure. I wouldn't think it would be wise to even expose your, yourself to anything with your mouth, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. Anyway, so April is coming. Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, that's April's Fool's Day. <laughs> it's April the 1st. Uh, so I got my, these all ready. I doubt there'll be a dentist appointment. Every six months I get my teeth cleaned. So, besides that, oh, today I... I mentioned uh, I've been reading The Wonderful Works of God. Uh, full title is The Wonderful Works of God, Instruction in the Christian Religion According to the Reformed Confession. Now, the Reformed Confessions are like the Heidelberg Catechism, the Belgic Confession, the Canons of Dort. Those are called the Three Forms of Unity. Those are confessions held by the Dutch Reformed Churches. And uh, this was by Herman Bavick, and this was translated out of the Dutch by Henry Zengstra. And uh, this is the new edition. That I, sh I showed you the, the old edition that I bought back in the 70s. It's the same book, but a different title. Today I copied off the free workbook. This uh, new edition of The Wonderful Works of God comes with a discussion guide. See, discussion guide. So today I was reading on... It was on... Uh, what was it on? It was on... Creation and Providence. Chapter 11, uh, like you have this discussion question, how do we learn to know and glorify God? In what ways has God revealed himself through creation and providence? What do the scriptures tell us about God's creative power and counsel? How is such knowledge a source of comfort? Why have the empirical sciences, philosophy, and evolutionary theory been unable to supply an answer to the origins of the universe. 
What does scripture tell us about the origin of things? How is it able to do so and why does it why does it do so? Discussion number two. How have science and philosophy attempted to answer why and to wit what in God created the world? What answer does scripture disclose in contrast? Now today I posted in my Facebook a quote that kind of about why God created what is the purpose of creation and I put it in my little Facebook this little quote here from Babak and I called it the COVID-19 update it's kind of like a little prose kind of poetry kind of thing so look at this as a I don't know, a poet, a poem? <laughs> COVID-19 update, quote, for his glorification of himself too, God does not need the world. For it is not the creature who is independently and self-sufficiently exalting his honor. Rather, it is he himself who by means of the creature or without him glorifies his own name and re revels in himself. God therefore never seeks out the creature to find something there that he is lacking. No, the whole world in its length and breadth is for him a mirror in which he sees his excellencies at play. God always remains resting in himself as the highest good, and he remains eternally blessed by his own blessedness. End of quote, Herman Babbitt, The Wonderful Works of God page 151. So I think that's a good perspective to keep when we see this plague all around us. It gives us a... You have our perspective as creatures of the dust and then you have the perspective of a holy, majestic, sovereign God. Because this is his world. <laughs> And we're his, just his creatures. So yeah, I copied off this guide. It was free discussion guide. I don't know. I probably doubt if I ever be in a discussion group where they will discuss the wonderful works of God by Herman Bowie. But I don't know. It was only it was free, and so I copied it off. So I read uh, I read the wonderful works of God most of the day. And then in the mail, around 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, I got this used book I had ordered. Uh, not this Sunday, but this last Sunday, we were downtown at Rita's World, which is now closed. Everything in downtown Holland is closed now. Now, they do have takeout restaurants, I think, but everything else is closed. But when I was at Rita's World, not this Sunday, but last Sunday, with Carol and we were getting Sunday newspapers, I looked at, I was looking at books. And you all know I collect Europia books, Europia. And I looked at this book and it was like $15, $16. And I, I thought, well, I can come home and look at Amazon, maybe find a used copy, really cheap. And I got this for $4, this copy. And it, it's not a new one, it came out this Europia came out in 2009. First publication of Europia, 2010. And it's called A Novel Bookstore by Laurence Coz, translated out of the French by Alison Anderson. It's kind of like a, a it's a literary kind of mystery fiction kind of thing. It revolves around books and bookstores. And it looked it kind of looked interesting. And as you all know, I collect, I collect Europia. I have like, this makes, I have 29 of these vines in Europia down in the lower level. So since I got that in the mail this afternoon, I've been reading this for my Monday reads. That's what I'm trying to get to. This is my Monday reads. And Carol said I should just get lost in this novel instead of just 
I've been reading from all over the place. Uh, like last night, I was reading something else last night. I can't remember now what I was reading last night. But I've been reading this since this afternoon and tonight. And I'll probably read it. The, you know, I'll read it for a couple of days this week. But most of the time I've been reading Our Reasonable Faith, or which is also called The Wonderful Works of God. And like I said, today I was on the Creation and Providence. And then I'll come to The Origin, Essence, and the Purpose of Man. That'd be chapter 12. So I kind of read this because, you know, obviously we are going through very difficult times. This worldwide uh, pandemic, pandemic, and uh, this is the kind of book that I can read, and you can meditate, and also you can look up the scriptures. He's always quoting from the Bible, so you can look up scriptures, let's, and you can, and you can read a passage of scripture, and you can meditate on it, and and some, you know, it. So it's kind of like. This is a good book for meditation, contemplation. It's written for lay people. Whereas, as I've said, this is a summary of Babbock's four-volume Reform Dogmatics. But this was written for lay people. And it's very devotional. It's very, uh, it's very easy to read. Uh, it's not... Uh, it's really good. Now for me, it's almost like a refresher course. But... It's good to reread things, things that you are acquainted with, you know. We all do that. I mean, we all reread things that we enjoy reading about, <laughs> even though we've read about the same thing all the time. It's like people are, they read about the Civil War, and they read every book on the Civil War, and they know all the battles, and they know all the generals, and they know the Confederate, and the, and the Union Army, and they, they can read it, and they just... They reread that stuff, but they always enjoy reading that. And they learn new things. I mean, I, I do pick up new things in this book, things I hadn't thought about in, in a while. So there is a benefit in rereading even things that you're very acquainted with, that you have a, almost a thorough knowledge of. But we can never exhaust we can never hold, you know, our, mind, our minds are finite, and what we can understand and what we can comprehend is finite. And we forget, I mean, things that we forget. That's why, even when I read the Bible, even today, I read things I didn't, you know, things I had forgotten. I had things I had not really thought about in a while. And so, so it's good to reread. Well, it's like, as a Christian, you're always rereading the Bible. My wife reads the Bible through every year. and She's been doing it as long as I've, you know, I've been married to her 41 years. And now, when the kids were growing up, you know, she didn't have time to always read through the Bible. But she does make it a practice to be reading the Bible. And we've always gone to churches in the past where they preach through the Bible. They, I taught adult Sunday school. I taught books of the Bible, and uh, I studied the Bible, and my wife has always studied the Bible. If you're, if you're a Christian, you go to churches where the Bible is held as authoritative, and that it's preached and taught from Genesis to Revelations. You just don't pick and choose your favorite verses, but you go through the whole book of Genesis, or the whole book of the Gospel of John, things like that. I do have a book coming in the mail tomorrow, but I'll show. It's called the American, uh, the American Radical, something like that. I like 19th century America, his, American history, looking at different radical movements, utopianism, uh, different kinds of, you know, spiritualism, things like that. But today, I mainly, from my Monday reads, a novel, a bookstore, 
by Lawrence Coase. Uh, so yeah, this is what I was reading today. And I read this this morning, Our Reasonable Faith, or which is also called The Wonderful Works of God. And it's a pretty quiet day. My wife slept all day because she was going to work tonight, so she went to bed at noon. And I just kind of drifted in the quiet and uh, watched the birds. It was a cold, gray, damp, cold day. Wrote my diary, messed with the computer, watched BookTube. So yeah, not much else to report. Thus far, none of us have gotten sick with this uh, virus. So we're just waiting out. Have to go through the month of April and see how it, here in, the, in West Michigan. On the east side of Michigan, Detroit has been slammed. Different counties east of us in Michigan have gotten slammed with people with the, the virus and people dying. But thus far in here in the West, it's just been cases here and there, but not just the hospitals being flooded with sick people. So we'll just see if the next couple of weeks, if that happens. So I hope you're all doing well. That, you know, I haven't seen anybody in BookTube saying they're sick. I have noticed that people are not making videos some people have just dropped out completely, and that, that's the way it goes. Sometimes people in BookTube are gone for years, <laughs> months. But I try to keep making videos because uh, I really enjoy talking about books, books that I'm, in, I'm reading, what I'm learning as a Christian, what's going on in my mind, wanting to know what's going on in your mind, what you're reading, and yeah. I don't really think that this is a community. <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't know what a community really is. I know the communion of the saints, and I really have never really experienced that in its perfect uh, expression. It's what I long for, the communion of the saints. And uh, But anyway, I'll sign off, and I just want to stop by tonight on the Monday Reads. Hope you had a good weekend. Hope you have a good new week. Hope that when we go through the month of April that this virus will at least be stopped to some extent. They're saying we could up to 100,000 to 200,000 people could die. 80,000. Some are saying 1 million to 2 million in the United States. I hope that's not true. I hope the Lord has mercy on us. But we'll see. So we have to pray, humble ourselves, and seek the Lord to uh, keep sustaining us in the midst of these dark days of this pestilence. So I'll sign off. And once again, I thank you for the new subscribers and the comments. And do uh, stay healthy, wash your hands, keep social distance. If you're sick, stay home. Uh, yeah, and uh, until next time, bye.